Uh, Emma, why doesn't this legislation already exist? Look, that's a really hard question to answer. Um, you know, look, we've, we've seen just, as, as you mentioned, this case in Inveril and Wagga, and we've just heard that um, this actually started with a 10-month-old boxer, Strawberry, who, um, you know, a baby herself died over four days um, giving birth to puppies that were still sold um, in a Western Australia pet store. Now, we've seen uh, legislation come in through Victoria. We're seeing legislation coming in through Western Australia New South Wales has no laws to protect these dogs. Um, you know, it's still legal to factory farm dogs in New South Wales. And it's absolutely shocking that the government has just turned an absolute blind eye to this. The Minister for Agriculture, Adam Marshall, um, in fact, one of these puppy farms that's just been raided is within his electorate. Um, and of course, the Minister for Government, Shelley Hancock, both have the power to outlaw this and they're both sitting on their hands. They're just not acting. Do you mean they have the power to outlaw it by voting in favour of your bill? Absolutely. Or they could have even put up their own legislation. They would have the numbers in the lower and the upper house. I'm very, very confident to be able to pass their own legislation, similar to what we've seen in Victoria and Western Australia. Um, myself as the Animal Justice Party I'm now is now putting up this legislation out of frustration because the government haven't acted. So uh, what's the process now? Where are you in this process? So we're very confident that we've got the numbers in the upper house when we put this legislation forward. Um, we did have the um, support of Labor, the Greens, of Independent, of One Nation and the Christian Democrats when we put up a notice of motion on this issue earlier this year. So we're now drafting the legislation, but this has actually become really urgent. So we're trying to get this legislation up as quickly as possible. Um, given that we've seen such changes in Western Australia and Victoria, we're now hearing stories from councils that puppy farmers in those states are just flooding across the border and setting up into New South Wales. So we hear from Moama Council that they've got development applications for farms of 400 female dogs um, that will be, you know, held in crates and forced to pump out litter after litter in these absolutely squalid conditions. And the councils have their hands tied behind their back because there are no, there is no legislation to actually stop these development applications from, from going through. So what laws currently exist around puppy farming and breeding? Um, there's actually very, very little. Um, there's a, a breeder registration program, but, I mean, it's really been set up to fail. Um, it requires the RSPCA to police online any breeders that are selling dogs. And, of course, the government gave no additional funding to the RSPCA or the Animal Welfare League to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, we know that there are roughly 200 puppy farms around New South Wales, but there's possibly even more. A lot of this is really hidden, it's underground. Um, it's very hard for the authorities to track down these facilities. And even when they do, because there's so little um, regulation, there's so little laws around this, there's often nothing that they can do when they do track down these places. So I think uh, it seems backwards that New South Wales doesn't have these laws. It seems like they should have been, uh, you know, established a very long time ago. I guess uh, to be devil's advocate here, the pushback from, uh, I guess, people who don't want this would be the fact that how do you make sure this, this legislation doesn't punish the people who are doing the right thing, like commercial dog breeders? So our legislation is designed in a very similar way to the legislation that's gone through Victoria. So really it's about ensuring that every breeder is registered and inspected every single year and then putting caps on the number of dogs any breeder can have and how many litters each female dog can have. So in Victoria, that's a limit of 10 female dogs for any one breeder and a maximum of five litters per female dog across her lifetime. And of course, every time she has a litter, um, there needs to be vet checks to make sure that both the mum and the pups are both healthy. And mm. so that way we're not entirely banning breeding, but we're yeah. putting restrictions around breeding and protecting people who are doing the right thing. Yeah, that sounds pretty reasonable. Uh, how concerning is that? Obviously, uh, Strawberry, the dog that is kind of behind this story, the 10-month-old boxer, obviously, you know, so that's a puppy itself and it's having litters. 
Yeah, look, I mean, it just, I've seen a couple of photos out of this particular property and you could see the buildup of faeces and urine. Um, we're hearing allegations that, um, that Strawberry wasn't able to get any veterinary treatment for over four days. Um, she was just left to rot because, from the inside. Because her out. owners wouldn't take her? That's my understanding. That's the allegations that have come forward. Um, and obviously that's what the RSPCA are now investigating, uh, the conditions around her death and what actually happened there. Um, and, did, and we do know that... How, sorry. sorry, how did those puppies get from Inverell to Western Australia, given this is recent, isn't it? This is like, are we, are we in COVID times? Like, how do you even logistically do that? Um, look, I, I don't actually know the answer to that. I, I'm assuming that's something that the RSPCA are investigating. Yeah. Um, look, there could be that the breeders are driving them across the border. It could be that, um, you know, some of these pet transport organisations are doing it as well. I have heard of different transport systems actually uh, um, offering that service. And that's really a red flag. Mm. If, if you're looking to adopt a new dog and you can't visit the mother and see the mother yeah. interacting with their young when they're born, that's a red flag. And that's one of the reasons why they're often actually transporting these dogs a large distance so that people can't meet the mothers with their pups. Um, and if you can't, if, if, if you're um, looking online for a dog and they're suggesting a, an agreed meeting place or if they're offering to drop the animals to you, that's a very big red flag. And I would highly recommend that if somebody doesn't want to support the puppy farming industry, that they would not purchase from anyone that was, that was making those offers. Okay, those are good tips to keep in mind. There are plenty of good uh, professional dog breeders, but certainly a lot of them uh, need some of these stricter and more stringent legislation. So good luck with it. It does sound like a pretty reasonable proposal. Thank you.